It is now my honor and privilege to present the VFW Armed Forces Award to Command Sergeant Major William Thetford. He, was, he, was, he has worn Army green since 1981, an infantryman by trade, having served as a rifleman, fire team leader, and squad leader with the 75th Ranger Regiment at Fort Lewis, Washington. Reassigned to Special Missions Unit in 1990, he would go on to serve as a team member, team sergeant, troop sergeant major, and its operations and training command sergeant major. In 2011, he was selected as command sergeant major of the Joint, Operation, Joint Special Operations Command. In 2014, he became the, the command senior enlisted leader of the United States Special Operations Command. And today, he serves as command senior enlisted leader of the U.S. Central Command. He is eligible for the VFW four times over, having served in Grenada, Somalia, Iraq, and Afghanistan. He, is also, he also has a peacekeeping deployment to Bosnia under his belt. As the national commander of, the largest, of, of America's largest and oldest major veterans organizations, we greatly, greatly appreciate what you continue to do for America for your Army and for your Joint Command, and all who serve and their families. I am especially pleased that your wife, Allison, can join you here today. With all your deployments and responsibilities, I can't imagine how you'll ever be able to repay her. Comrades, auxiliary members, and guests, it is with great pride and honor that that the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States present the 2018 Armed Forces Award to the recipient of the Silver Star for, for to a recipient of the Silver Star for his heroic actions in Somalia, the Bronze Star with Combat V device for Iraq, plus two awards of the Combat Infantry Madge, the, the Command Senior Enlisted Leader of the U.S. Central Command, and Life Member of the VFW Department of Florida. Command Sergeant Major Bill Thetford. Armed Forces Award, Gold Medal and Citation awarded to Command Sergeant Major William F. Thetford, United States Army, in special recognition and sincere appreciation, Command Sergeant Major William F. Thetford for nearly four decades of faithful and dedicated service to America and to his Army, to his soldiers and joint service teammates and their families at home and abroad. As a warrior deployed to Grenada, Somalia, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and as a peacekeeper, instructor, and leader, his selfless and continued service to the nation is true to the ideals, tradition, and values of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hand and the official seal of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States this 23rd day of July, 2018, approved by the National Council of Administration, signed by Keith E. Harmon, Commander-in-Chief, tested Brian Duffy, Adjutant General. Well, uh, good morning to you. Wow, who would have thought many years ago a young airborne ranger and his beautiful wife would one day stand in front of this audience. I'm humbled. So, Commander Harmon, thank you uh, for this honor, and I accept the Armed Forces Award on behalf of all my fellow soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, but especially those troops deployed in the CENTCOM region today where I hail from. I should first tell you that I recently became a VFW member, and it was because of your core values that resonated with me because of how they impacted me as a special operations candidate many years ago and the core values that we share. Your core values, such as always put the interests of our members first, promote patriotism, and honor military service. 
My military service began years ago in the Ranger Regiment, where we share values expressed in our Ranger Creed that say in part, I will never leave a fallen comrade, and under no circumstances will I ever embarrass my country. Those ethos expressed both in the VFW and the Ranger Regiment are underwritten by what we say in the special operations community is the first soft truth, and that is humans are more important than hardware. Likewise, the VFW's mission to foster camaraderie of veterans of overseas conflicts is still incredibly relevant today. I know this because today's troops serving proudly in the CENTCOM region, which as you know is still a pretty tough neighborhood with four ongoing armed conflicts right now. So we say in CENTCOM, prepare, pursue, prevail. We have fought there for many years against Al-Qaeda and more recently alongside our coalition partners under the superb leadership of my boss, General Joseph Votel, the CENTCOM commander, in our ongoing campaign to defeat ISIS, as well as our current efforts in Afghanistan to finally bring the Taliban into the reconciliation process under President Trump's South Asia strategy. On the home front, our troops and their families are making the same sacrifices that you all did in your respective careers. And like you, they do it with pride. They serve to support one another and for the love of this fantastic country of ours. And speaking of this country, anybody make it to the Trace Atkins concert last night? Yeah. If, if you listen to Trace Atkins' song about Arlington National Cemetery and you didn't get a little choked up, wow, I don't know what to tell you. But Trace Atkins, what a patriot. And I know I hear a lot of talk about membership in the VFW. And I can offer to you that I suspect one day, today's service members, they will find their way to you and enjoy the support and more importantly, the camaraderie that you offer one another, just as I have found since I've joined. Now, we've had some pretty good news in the Department of Defense lately, like a healthy budget from our Congress that will help modernize our equipment and provide training resources to improve our readiness against our adversaries. This is great both for our troops' readiness and their morale, but not from a sense of entitlement, but because our troops want to succeed and they want to win, and we will win. In addition, our troops have some real heroes at the national level today, like the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Dunford, and Secretary of Defense, James Mattis. Yeah. The Chairman's and Secretary's guidance in the national defense strategy to make the Joint Force more lethal and resilient really strikes a chord with the troops. That is the message they wanted and needed to hear, and now they've got it. Because as you can imagine, with, within the ranks today, General Dunford and Secretary Mattis are viewed as national treasures, and we appreciate everything they do for us. Finally, I'd like to share with you a story that affected me years ago that I think this audience can appreciate. It was October 1993 in Mogadishu, Somalia, and Task Force Ranger, as we called ourselves, had just fought a battle to capture a Somali warlord and some of his key lieutenants. 
And in that fight, sadly, we suffered many casualties. The task force commander was Major General Bill Garrison, who presided over a memorial service force and who no doubt recognized that our morale was a little beat up. General Garrison offered these words from Shakespeare for the task force members still standing. Whoever does not have the stomach for this fight, let him depart. Give him money to speed his departure, since we wish not die in that man's company. Whoever lives past today and comes home safely will rouse himself every year on this day, show his neighbors his scars, and tell them bellish stories of their great feats of battle. Anybody embellish any stories out there? Maybe just a little bit? I may have heard a few last night at the hotel bar. They were good ones. <laughs> These stories he will teach his son, and from this day until the end of the world, we shall all be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For whoever has shed his blood with me shall be my brother. And those men afraid to go will think themselves as lesser men as they hear how we fought and died together. I have tried to live up to those words since that October day, just as I know each of you have in your own lives. So congratulations to all of you on 119 years of service to the nation and our veterans. You have much to be proud of, and I'm proud to be among your ranks today. Thank you for this award, and if no one has offered to you lately, welcome home. <laughs>